Hello and welcome back to another video where today I'll be continuing the ratio series and the focus of this video will be the gearing ratio. Now the gearing ratio is one of the most important financial ratios used to analyse a company's financial health. The gearing ratio measures the relationship between a company's debt and its equity. But what does that actually mean? Well, in simple terms, it shows how much of the business is financed through borrowing in comparison to how much is financed through shareholders' funds. But again, why does that matter? Well, it's a key indicator of financial risk. The more debt a company has, the higher the risk, especially if profits were to drop. The reason being that regardless of how well a business performs, you've still got to pay your loans and the interest on those loans, whereas the same doesn't apply to shareholders. The amounts paid to shareholders can vary because if the business doesn't do well, then they can lower the amounts paid to those shareholders or even not pay them anything at all. Imagine we have two companies, company A and company B. Both earn the same profits, but company A is funded mostly by loans, while company B is funded mostly by shareholders. Company A would have a higher gearing, which means more debt to repay. So if interest rates were to go up, or the business didn't perform as well, then they're at more risk because they've still got to pay back those loans regardless of that poor performance. That's why investors and lenders will closely monitor the gearing ratio. It tells them how leveraged the company is. And leverage is just another term for comparing debt to equity. So you may also hear the term that if a business has high leverage, then it's a riskier investment. Now there are a few ways to calculate the gearing ratio, but the most common one is as follows. Debt over debt plus equity times 100. Breaking that down then, debt usually refers to the long-term liabilities, such as loans. Equity tends to refer to shareholders' funds, including share capital and retained earnings, which are simply the profits that have been kept within the business. Let's now take a look at an example. Hawkins Limited has 250,000 in debt and 750,000 in equity. The gearing ratio would be calculated as debt of 250,000 divided by the debt of 250,000 plus equity of 750,000 times 100, which equals 25%. Hawkins Limited therefore has a gearing ratio of 25%. So next, we need to look at what a good gearing ratio is. Now these are general bands because it does vary between industries but a good base to work off is as follows. Below 25% is low gearing and low risk, 25% to 50% is moderate gearing and medium risk and above 50% is high gearing and higher risk. But as I said, context really does matter, so although these should give you a good idea, it's worth comparing between businesses of the same industry. So then to summarise, the gearing ratio is a powerful tool to assess how risky a company's funding structure is. A low gearing ratio might suggest financial stability, but could also mean lower growth potential. A higher ratio can mean greater returns if all goes well. Understanding gearing helps you to make a smarter decision when you're investing, lending or running a business. And that wraps up this video on gearing. I hope you found it useful and remember if you have to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more accounting videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.